Greek Easter, what is it all about? Well, to be perfectly honest, it's very simple. From the fiery pits of the volcano in St. Helens emerged the glorious St. Barbecue who came down and dined for our sins. That's the story I'm going with, and I'm sticking with it. It's no crazier than a guy coming down uh, from heaven and dying for our sins, then being shoved in a cave and then coming back out three days later and be like, yeah, I'm good now, see you later, and off you go. 2,000 years ago, and nothing significantly religious has happened ever since. So, my Easter is the glorious Saint Barbecue came down so we can all dine and feast for the glory of Barbacoa. Anyway, <clears throat> yes, of course, it is that time of the year again. The Greek Easter is upon us. And um, I thought I will talk a little bit about the Greek Easter, being Greek, but not only Greek, Greek and Cypriot. You see, parents, that was from Greece, one was from Cyprus. And when it comes to Easter, the only real differences are, one, at church, the Greeks are very quiet and respectful. The Cypriots natter all the time, gossip among each other, and judge. But on both sides, the women are really hot, and that was the main reason I used to go to church up until I was a teenager, and I completely abandoned religion. Um, so, yay. So, one of the differences we have uh, between the Greek and the Cypriot Easter is on, on the Greek side, you have Tureki, which is basically challah bread, a Jewish bread that Greeks used for Easter, <clears throat> because Pascha is basically Passover. Okay, that's where that's rooted in. The old Jewish tradition of Passover was turned in uh, Europe, in Christian Europe, into Pascha or Pasha or that. Unless you're in Northern Europe, in which case it's taken from Eoyster or Oyster, uh, which is some old German goddess thing. And on the Cypriot side, you have Flona, which is infinitely more nicer, delicious, tastier than Tureki. I've never really been a fan of Tureki um, or Hala bread, uh, you know, but I am a fan of Flona. And Flona is basically, it's still a bread. It's kind of sweet. You could put raisins in it. I like it with raisins in it or sultanas. Apologies for the crackle on the mic. But it's a beast like that, covered in sesame seed, made in a very specific way. I think it's with yogurt in there. And you can stick a bunch of stuff in there. My Aya from Cyprus used to make the best uh, I ever had flowers. But then everyone's going to say the same, and that's absolutely fine. Because homemade is better than industrially made. Uh, that one is actually industrially made. But it's actually not bad. It just came out fresh out of the oven when mum just went to get some stuff for tomorrow's celebrations. And... Uh, we got lucky this year. Usually, they're either sold out or crap. And one of the most important things, in fact, it's what made me want to do this video, was about the cracking of eggs. So, in Greece, we tend to just paint our eggs mainly red. You can do different colours. And you just crack. And you keep going until one person is left alive. And then that one person uh, has to kill their whole family and bury them in the garden. If that's not tradition, then I'm in a lot of trouble. No, but in all seriousness, you crack eggs, and if one of those years you didn't put your egg in the freezer to cheat, then you're full of crap, and I don't believe you. Okay? <clears throat> but one of the questions I get every year, and I always get a lot of pushback for giving them the reason for the eggs, because, uh, you know, people that live in ignorant bubbles don't want to know the truth. They like their little bubble of ignorance. The eggs roots are <clears throat> from the pagan um, religions, okay? They predate, the, the origins of the egg predates Christianity, just like pretty much every Christian tradition you can think of predates Christianity and is rooted in paganism. So the egg is a symbolism of new life uh, from, the, from the pagans and uh, as far as I know. And it mainly has its roots, I think, think in northern Europe it kind of worked its way around there and like everything it was adopted by Christians stolen and then 
twisted to kind of be the symbolism of the rebirth of Jesus and all this kind of stuff. Uh, traditionally, the Easter period is rooted, uh, uh, you know, again, the whole of Easter is rooted in paganism to do with the equinox, which is like the celebration of a period that where light, uh, night and day are of equal time kind of thing. And the rabbit is about like fertility and shagging and a bunch of other Stuff that I, I could go into more detail about, but you're not just going to chastise me for telling you the truth right now. So, yeah. Uh, also, if you haven't quite guessed it, I am an atheist. I don't actually believe in uh, God, uh, which has been quite fun if you're uh, from a Greek family. Although my actual family, like my parents, you know, they were fine with it. There's not much they could do uh, about it. <clears throat> Families in Greece uh, are a bit like, um. But I don't care, you know, I, I'm not I'm not there to bend to the wheels of crappy tradition to please a bunch of old people that are so superstitious. It's, it's beyond hilarious. I mean, if you grew up in my family, you'd understand that. Why is it they should they tell you to respect your adults when these adults are not that smart? You know, except for my dad, he was actually a literal genius. Um, and but he was rooted in tradition. So he just went along with it, and that's wrong. You shouldn't do that. Just because something's a tradition doesn't mean it's the right thing to do, and and especially when talking about religion, you know. If you can break away from it and you don't need it, just go. Just walk away. I have. I don't. Like I said, the, the only traditional Greek thing I do is Easter, and it's having a barbecue. Because Christmas isn't really celebrated in Greece. At least it wasn't. For the years that I knew, it was mainly the New Year that was celebrated and the gifts were exchanged and all of that. It wasn't really, in the Greek Orthodox religion, they don't really believe in the Nativity. It's now Easter Saturday, uh, and what the Greeks are meant to do prior to that is fast for 40 days. So it's a bit like in, a bit like, I don't know if they fast it right. Yeah, and Ramadan and, and, and all this kind of stuff. So you're meant to fast Lent for 40 days, and then from midnight tonight you break the fast the fast is over you know you you walk jesus around you go under the uh the supposed epitaph or the grave of jesus and all this kind of stuff you do your thing everyone sings christos anesti and the next thing you know you're going home and you're having soup and then the day after that you're cracking eggs having a great big fat barbecue because the torture of going to bloody church is over again that's how i see it um so, yeah, there's not much else to say. The food is fantastic. Uh, if you do have Greek friends, try to worm your way into making it into their houses during Easter. We've always invited friends that aren't uh, Greek Orthodox into our house every Easter, and they just enjoy the lovely barbecue. Uh, it's my absolute favourite time of the year because it's barbecue season now. This is the start of the barbecue season, and technically, if you're Greek, you should be working on your summer body before this season, because from here on out, it's game over. Uh, anyway, that is it on Greek Easter. A very jaded video, but uh, I hope you are now fully informed of the weird traditions that surround my culture. And uh, that is all. For those Greeks that are watching this on Sunday, Christos Anesti. For those that are watching it now, happy St. Barbecue Day. <laughs>